I've done it. I did it one year when I was at Arkansas, but it's definitely new. I don't know. I think it's the um, me taking a stand against the portal, spring practice, everything in my own way. Um, Dal, just looking at naming a starting quarterback, do you have a target date about when you want to do it? Uh, and what's the philosophy between, say, deciding in the spring and deciding maybe halfway through preseason practice? Yeah, it's a really good question, and we could probably spend 30 minutes on it. There's advantages to both. Um, you know, we've had 13 practices, so guys have had good days, bad days, continual growth. Um, you're going to have that. The advantage of doing it is if you did it early, well, then everyone knows who it is. Um, it's also, you still got a whole training camp in the summer. So what happens if, you know, one of these young kids are all of a sudden the new guy, you know, ha is a little bit better because he's been through it all. And the second time executing it, he's better at it. So, you know, you, you evaluate everything. We've had 13 practices. Obviously we're not ready to do that right now. Um, we're semi-pleased where with everyone's at, but there's a long way to go with all of that. The disadvantage is, this most of the time the locker room knows who the best guy is but based on practice anyway or they have a their own feelings of that um and to be honest most of the time the locker room knows before the coaches know um because it is their team the good teams are led by the locker room and um the disadvantage to not naming a guy is there's still five quarterbacks out there and it's like hey who do we follow who do we lead and it's the mentality of do your job like do your job like that Keep the main thing the main thing and worry about the things you can control. And same with those guys. So we're not there yet. We've had 13 practices. We have two left. Um, so at some point, Coach Beamer and myself and other and the rest of the offensive staff will sit down and talk about this. I don't. You know, it's there's – I wish it was that easy where it's like – but it's kind of a feel. It's kind of, you know, they're going to determine the depth chart a little bit themselves as well. How, how do you manage spring practice and the portal when you're trying to – Add some pieces for, Man, for the fall. Yesterday was hard because think about this. You come in and uh, you've got um, you got to correct the tape from the day before with your own players. And your phone's dinging every 10 seconds from a GA saying this guy just got in, this guy got in. Then you got to check and make sure that guy got in. And then you got pro football focus. So you're putting their names in there and you're watching their tape. And it's a constant grind till 1 a.m. last night of trying to get guys evaluated. Because for me, this is my third year in college football. So I don't have this huge resume of players that are in the portal. and all, So everything's brand new to me. So I'm sitting there. Uh, our GAs and analysts are sitting there saying, hey, so-and-so, because they're scrolling Twitter and they're doing all that stuff, and you got to check and make sure their name got in, and you're trying to do everything the right way as well, and you're evaluating, you know, 30 kids yesterday off pro football focus tape and watching it, and then if you like them, you got to go back and watch a game because if you just go off the highlight, it's like a movie trailer. Like sometimes the movie trailer is a lot better than the movie, and you, you would go and you're like, I just waste all my money, um, and you're navigating that stuff too. So yesterday was a long, hard day. Um, a lot of film was watched. A lot of people were evaluated. Um, you know, and so and it's like that. It's so fluid, and you're going to deal with it for the next two weeks on top of trying to go out and have a good practice today and being locked in on what, you know, we had uh, scripted and installed and making sure we're teaching our own players. So it is a challenge right now. Dal, I'm sure there'll be some things on Saturday that you guys do from an offensive standpoint, but I'm sure there's going to be some other things that you guys don't want to show simply because the game's uh, on TV. I bring that up because when you evaluate what guys are doing in this spring game, how much of it is just simply, okay, execution, and then how do you kind of factor that into what you guys are going to ultimately try to do this fall? Yeah, it'll be vanilla ice cream, I promise that. Uh, I like vanilla ice cream, but not, other, not everyone else does. They want the sprinkles and the syrup and, yeah, all the toppings, and it's not going to be that. Um, but it is, it's going to be about execution, technique, and fundamentals. Um, anytime you go on the field, it's important. Every time you practice, it is the most important thing we do. It is the only thing in this program that really matters is practice. It's the only way to get better. It's the only sport. Think about this basketball and baseball. They play games to get better. We practice to play, we practice five times a week to play one game. They play games to get better. So that's why it's really important for us. So it is an opportunity, to, you know. I guess we're doing a draft and we'll split up so the team, the people will be playing with different people and those things. But it'll be more about technique, fundamentals, uh, making sure we're executing the, our simplest form of offense. Got a couple for you. One, Shane said Tuesday that you were probably going to call plays for both teams that hadn't decided yet. Is that going to be happening? Um, we, we'll talk about that later. That's still not the, been decided. We're, I literally, between portal and practice, like Saturday seems like a year away. And then 
kind of know you said it's technique, it's fundamentals, it's that kind of thing. But what would be a successful spring game for you? Is there anything you're kind of looking to see specifically? Then we got better. You know, it's like one more opportunity to get better, make sure that we've improved in an area that we weren't great at um, on Tuesday, Thursday. We've got a, a small practice tomorrow as well. But that's really what we're looking at. It's like the individual steps to get better. And, like, there's – this is the ultimate team sport. But it, there is an individual – the only way to make the team better is improve yourself and making sure that each guy is getting a little bit better than they were the day before. Dow, last spring, I guess there might have been some – questions concerns about the running back position just because there weren't a lot of known guys yeah. this year you got some known guys but rockets not playing in the entire springs so yeah. how, how did this spring and last spring kind of compare for you from the running game standpoint you know last year was hard for me because i didn't know anyone when i got here i mean we played the south carolina they came to Fayetteville one day and we played but you know and I, I knew the, the i knew who spencer leggett was at this time last year no one knew who xavier leggett was um, so, you know, Oscar obviously being from Arkansas, I had a little bit of familiarity with him cause he's from Little Rock and, um, you know, and I've obviously being with Rocket for two years and knowing what type of player he is, we all know what he's put on tape, uh, that way. So there's still some, some things of like young guys developing as well and making sure like Juju being hurt creates opportunity for other people to make sure they get a little bit more rep. And Jawarn is a, a very new player and is a very, raw, um, talented guy um, that we have to continue to get better every day. And every day he does something that's a new experience for him. And he's with Juju, Juju down, Rocky down. And both guys have played. And that's like the – it's almost an NFL mentality. Like when we had Darren uh, and Felix at the Arkansas on Peyton Hills, like Coach Nutt had those guys in green jerseys. They didn't practice. Like Darren, Darren and Felix never got touched. Darren McFadden and Felix Jones. They, they, we, they were in green jerseys and bubble wrap over there. And that's kind of where – Rocket and Juju are right now, but now that DJ Braswell, Jawarn Howell, uh, Oscar, like it's an unbelievable opportunity for you to get more reps. And we got two walk ons with Nate and Larry getting reps that, uh, you know, normally they're getting the, the very minimal reps and they're actually getting a chance to prove themselves and get better. So it, it, there is a. It, there is some advantages to those guys not going because we do know those guys. And those two guys need to protect their bodies. They've played a lot of football as well, but they have resumes, so we know. Um, and getting these other guys reps is definitely going to help them. So we, we know a little bit more about those guys. And, we, and they've been, we've had a couple live situations, which for running backs, you really can't tell until you put the ball down and it's live because like, does he break that tackle? Does he make that guy miss? Like you guys have been at practice and everyone's like the defense is hooping, hollering, and like they're saying that stuff with Lenoris and Robbie. And all of a sudden, when it's live, it's like you know, last Saturday, Robbie or Lenore shugs like the defensive end's got to, about to go hit him, and like he shrugs him off and takes off running. It's like watching KJ two years ago at Arkansas. Um, but so there's different things like when it's live that you get to see from these running backs, which has been good. It sounds like when you talk about everything going on right now, you're just kind of drinking from a fire hose. Uh, last year, um, going through the spring portal process with spring ball, was there anything you learned about just a process or logistics that you've taken to this year? And I'm guessing is, is there something you know after one or two days that you're like, okay, we need to we need to do this to make sure our process is more efficient, so I can you know actually evaluate more people. Yeah, you know, it's a great – that's a really good question. I think everyone's trying to figure that out on the run. Um, urgency. Urgency. you got to have great urgency. Like all these – every time – it's like NFL free agency. The difference is everyone compares it to NFL free agency. But NFL free agency, we knew for a year, and there was a cut-up made, and then we transitioned from the season, and you'd be sitting around your office, like drinking Diet Coke, like watching the tape, like grading them out. Well, now it is drinking out of a fire hose because now it's like, hey, go, go. Because not just so everyone knows, not everyone follows the rules, right? Like there's there's other stuff going on, and you're you got to watch quick, and you got to you, you don't want to have an incomplete evaluation of a player, but you better go because you got an opportunity to improve your roster, um, and you better the best teams improve their roster, and every time you get a chance to improve your roster, you need to be better with keeping the players you want. And also adding to this and to this thing because everyone else is too, and it's a, the dynamic for our conference is different too because there's no SEC to SEC, so every SEC, all 14 teams, which everyone says, I mean, it's the best conference in America. They're going after the same players, so you better be urgent. And you, well, there's no time to wait. Dale, I know you've talked about it a little bit in the past, but I mean, a week from today is going to be the NFL draft and. For Spencer, he's trying to, to make some Gamecock history. What can you tell people on the outside, whether it be a coach, whether it be a scout, GM, 
what they're getting when they draft this quarterback? Ooh, I've gotten a lot of calls, and it's picked up a lot the last week. Um, what you could tell everyone is what's on tape. You're talking about an extremely tough, tough player that's got a, an unbelievable throw in motion. I mean, his throw in motion is – it's what you want. I hope my son throws like him. He won't because mom, dad, and God only gave him so much. But this guy is an extremely blessed thrower. He's a great teammate. He's an unbelievable teammate. And, um, you know, there's I guess there's a show, uh, some show that was silly and back. And I don't think it portrayed him the right way from what I saw because what I see is an unbelievable guy that cares about his teammates. Um, go ask Luke Doty, Lenore Sellers, Tanner Bailey, what they think about Spencer Rattler. Um, you know, that was an unbelievably close room because – our leader, our leader was Spencer. It was not me. It was Spencer. Um, did everything the right way and took everyone in. Cared about it. Cared about the other guys in the room. But and it's and it's the thing we talked about with Spence is this thing was going. And it, it like never complained about a leaky offensive line. And he's making all these NFL throws. You know these three level concepts and but these throws that like you know you go back and what I told him. The, the play against George on third, 10 in the rain, you're playing the number one team in the nation on the rain, and Trey drops the ball. But, like, getting hit in the face and being able to throw that on time, accurately anticipate it right there in the biggest game of the year versus the number one team in the rain. And, like, now, that, now everyone's starting to see it. They see the talent. But, like, you're getting a guy with high character. He's got a great mom and dad. That's The biggest thing, I, and I tell this to these GMs that call me, these head coaches that call me about Spence, the ability to overcome adversity and, and deal with prosperity, Spencer's done it. And when you go look and when you go do a hard look at these guys, just going through hard times in life, it's not fun, but the NFL, you're going to go through that and be able to get on the other side of it because um, everyone's going to be looking at you. And you're going to be in a major media market majority of the time. And to be able to stand there and take it on the chin and, and own the, the bad, um, praise the good. I think Spencer's gone through all that stuff that he's better for it because what he's gone through, and I think he's fireproof and he's ready to go. These 13 practices for Lenores, how would you sum them up? Um, it's been it's a lot of fun to coach him because he's so positive. Uh, he doesn't have bad days. I tell him he's a robot all the time, um, but it's also one of his best characteristics. He's very consistent. He has gotten better every day. He learns from his mistakes. I think the best thing about Lenore, outside the town, all that other stuff, is most of the time, most of the time, um, he doesn't make the same mistake twice. And Coach Parcells used to say, dumb players do dumb things. Smart players seldomly do dumb things. He seldomly does dumb things and takes care of the football. And he's still young. I mean, you're talking about a guy that's a redshirt freshman. Um, got to play a little bit last year, which obviously helped. And it's his second year in the system. But the system won't be the same. You guys know it. I know it. He knows it. It's, we're going to evolve it to fit our players, whether it's Lenore or Robbie or Dante or Luke Doty or Davis, whoever the quarterback is, um, it's going to change. It won't look the same as it did last year because we built that thing to fit Spencer. And um, now we'll change it to fit whoever the quarterback is this year. But he's been, he's been solid. I mean, the kid is very consistent. Hey, Dal, before a scrimmage, whether it's a closed scrimmage or the spring game, do the coordinators coordinate? And by that, do I mean, do you ask each other, hey, can I get some certain looks because I need to get certain things on tape? I think this is, this is the second you, this been, you, this is the second question you've asked about this. Uh, defensive guys are terrorists. All right? They're trying to win every drill. They're trying to play every drill. They're trying to, like, it's, that's just what they do. And every team I've ever been a part of, that's what it is. Um, and there's a saying, um, execution does not uh, fuel um, – or emotion does not fuel execution. So the games are so different. Like defensive guys want to make a play, and it's like the whistle's blowing. It's not – and it's like they're going crazy on the sideline. They're like a women's softball team over there, like chanting and stuff. And, um, and I mean, that's where their enthusiasm comes from. And offense comes back to – it takes 11 guys to get, gain four yards on a run. It takes one – prick on defense to make a tackle you know or a tfl and they jump a gap it's like he should be in the c gap well he wasn't he's in the b gap like we got to fix it uh, but there there are rules of engagement that uh you do play with in these type games and um you know you start drafting teams and like the camera the chemistry on the offense sometimes defense this is this is what used to be frustrating about the nfl defense like preseason Offensive coaches hate preseason football because you've got to prepare. You've got to watch tape on them because you've got to have their blitzes because if you don't, someone gets hurt. The defense could show up right tomorrow and play a game, say over cover four, over cover one, play your rules. So it's, it's different. Um, 
the preparation is different for both sides. So there are rules of engagement that you do talk about and um, to have cleaner practices to get the things that Clayton asked for a couple motions today. He's got a, a blitz in that he wants to see off some motions and those things. So we coordinate that way. We did that. I mean, that's just one example today we, we did some things on. Thank you, Appreciate you guys.